plot twist. Your government tells you that they're offering you a gold standard. You can convert your cash to a currency completely pegged to gold reserves and based on the spot price of gold. But it's in the form of a CBDC. So we talked about Zimbabwe rolling out a government-backed gold coin last year. That was an attempt to give its citizens a more stable option, their own currency, the Zim dollar, which was getting destroyed by inflation. Now these new coins, they were considered legal tender. That part was novel, but like we talked about previously, this was an expensive experiment in a country with an average annual salary of $26,000. The more typical annual income, well, that's more like $7,000. So a $2,000 gold coin, it's not really feasible as a wide scale fix. If a person there had money, well, they could already buy something like a Krugerrand. The difference, though, is that Zimbabwe's own coin, their own gold coin, that was given a value equal to the spot price of gold and it was legal tender. So the idea was that you could go to the store and you can spend it. Now, you can imagine the issue. Nobody's going to go to the grocery store and pay with a $2,000 gold coin. What was actually happening instead is that people were still exchanging Zim dollars for USD. Now the US dollar, it's also legal tender there, a lot more stable than the Zim dollar, and it's far more divisible than a $2,000 gold coin. So the government's goal there of reducing the reliance on foreign currency probably didn't work out. Reports show that Zimbabwe issued 25,000 gold coins, but the local demand for US dollars has not decreased. So now the government is rolling out a gold-backed digital currency with the same goal, but this route allows people to get in with a much smaller amount of Zim dollars. They don't have to spend a month's worth of income or a quarter's worth of income on a single coin. So this is interesting for a few reasons, but we can't really cover the topic without first saying that Zimbabwe's economy is a mess right now. In the United States, we wake up knowing what the price of goods are going to be, priced in USD. Same goes for anyone in Canada, the UK, Australia, Germany. Those are the top five countries people watch this channel from. It's a little bit hard for us to relate to that. I've seen reports of Zimbabwe businesses literally printing their own money. They give that as some kind of future purchase coupon. That bypasses the volatility of the Zim dollar. That's how bad it is. And to make it worse, it's hard to get a hold of U.S. dollars. You have to buy them on the street. And if the currency conversion is about a thousand Zim dollars to one USD, the money changers might charge as much as seventeen fifty for one USD. So it's a tough situation. You might call it a corrupt situation. And I'm no expert on Zimbabwe. I'm just giving the background to show that. For all we talk about potential issues here, they are going through some of these things right now and they have been for a while zimbabwe has been struggling with hyperinflation for more than a decade inflation in february hit 230 percent so there's just no comparison to what we're used to here what we can look at though is the idea of a digital currency being backed by a physical asset like gold that doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to do and there are a few crypto projects that are currently backed by gold today. Now, I don't know a whole lot about them, but PaxG pops up in the comments now and then. They have their gold vaulted at the LBMA. Tether Gold, that's another similar project. And Perth Mint Gold Token, they actually have their gold backing vaulted at the Perth Mint. Now, there are others, but again, I don't really know enough about them to say a whole lot and their cryptocurrencies. So it's a space that's just not very regulated. And I don't know what that means in terms of gold backing claims. I assume that what they say is true. But again, I always assume that any crypto token has risks associated with it. I mean, the same could be said about any investment stocks or anything else, but crypto is at another level. So the reason I bring that up is just that we've gone from gold in your possession, you having physical gold, to a digital token and the promise of it being backed by gold. Now, to me, these are very different things. Even if it's a one-to-one -one backing, it still feels like a gold ETF on a blockchain. I mean, the differences in the upsides, of course, are that it would potentially be as stable as gold, and then also that you could easily spend it. So if your currency is on some kind of hyperinflationary roller coaster, it might be pretty interesting to you in Zimbabwe 
is definitely in that category. Now, this is a tough statement to make. You can't really group all of Africa, but Africa is one of the fastest growing crypto markets in the world. So the introduction of a gold-based cryptocurrency, well, hypothetically gives a possible stability to a population that's presumably familiar with how it works. And since the gold-backed digital currency will be issued by the central bank, it will also be regulated, again, presumably. If you live in a country not going through hyperinflation at the moment, any country with a stable currency, well, it seems a little bit odd to switch to something that's based on a more rapidly fluctuating value like gold. Think about using a gold-backed currency to pay a bill on any day that Jay Powell or Janet Yellen are talking. It would just be weird. You wouldn't know if it was going to go up or it was going to go down. It would just add one more layer of unpredictability to the cost of goods. When do you go out and buy your groceries and fur hats? Do you do it Tuesday night or do you wait until Wednesday afternoon? You just don't know. This is a weird situation. It's also complicated. Zimbabwe is mixing three things. They're mixing cryptocurrency, gold, and a central bank currency. So really this is a gold-backed CBDC. Now, hypothetically, it would make paying bills easier than paying with cash and make it more stable than paying with Zim dollars. But if we had something like this here in the United States, well, and I guess we do if you count things like Pax G, well, it would seem like something that I would want to hold as a hedge. It wouldn't be something that I'd want to run out and use as a payment option. Not to mention the fact that you're trying to replace gold and dollars with something that really has no privacy. So this seems like an interesting experiment the value of having a gold peg that sets a floor on the currency, it's pretty clear. And stabilizing the value compared to the Zim dollar also seems like a good thing. So here's where I'm skeptical. Now, I don't know enough to give an informed opinion about Zimbabwe's government, but I know a little bit about the United States and how the general public trusts the amount of gold being held in Fort Knox. Now, it might all be there, but there is some skepticism about that 261 million ounces. And the United States hasn't had a comprehensive audit really since 1953. I guess you could say 1985, there was an audit performed as well. And in 1974, Congress was allowed in to peak. And there are audits going all the time as well. We've seen them. I don't doubt that. But basically, you have the government telling you how much gold they're holding. So if you don't have a requirement for an independent audit, you, meaning the government, really can issue as many tokens as you'd like. You simply set the value of one unit to the spot price of gold, and then you issue as many as you want. And at that point, really, you're just issuing a CBDC with the value that's pegged to gold. And maybe that's better than using Zim dollars, but it almost feels like gold is the lipstick on the pig here. It's just kind of a thinly veiled CBDC with a credibility bump coming from gold's historic performance. But I could be wrong. So let us know what you think. Would you be interested in a CBDC if that CBDC was backed by gold and pegged to its price? I think I know what you're going to say, but you might surprise me. And what if it wasn't issued by the central bank? Would that change things? Let us know. And while you're in the comments, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.